I shall start again, should I? Yes, Okay, good evening and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of Warwick District Council on the 8th of February 2024. In terms of the emergency procedure, there are no planned tests, so if the alarm sounds, please leave by the designated exit route via reception. If the preferred route is blocked, use the nearest alternative. Do not use the list. Lift. Please assemble at the designated point, which is the County Museum in Market Place. Uh, members of public and press should report to a member of reception who will be wearing a yellow fluorescent jacket. Council and officers to committee services officer. Please do not re-enter the building until advised it's safe to do so. So do we have any apologies for absence? I think everybody's here. Yes. So that's... Uh, any declarations of interest? No, no declarations of interest. Minutes of the 6th of December. I will propose them from the chair. Do I? Thank you, Councillor Harrison. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Now, because we have a member of the public wishing to speak tonight, we're going to move straight on to item 11, protection of ground nesting birds. This is where I realise I don't have my five-minute timer up, but uh, uh, Linda Bromley, uh, when you're ready, you start, and it'll be five minutes from then. Thank you. Can you hear me? Thank you, Councillor Davison, for inviting me to speak. It was short notice, so it's off the top of my head. Um, Friends of St Mary's Lands have been concerned about these issues, and in fact, our much love common has been the subject of a lot of controversy over the years, um, going back to a march through town by the Mayor of Warwick, uh, an Act of Parliament then coming about, a hotel um, proposed, and a 1,200 signature petition handed into this council when uh, a working party group was first set up. Um, we have been concerned because the public do use this area frequently. It's um, an important community asset. And we were all concerned um, when uh, Mr Elliot announced at a public meeting that in fact the council could sell the land. This has always worried us. Um, but the working party was set up and the friends were invited along with two representatives. Mr Elliot did cut this down to one afterwards, but we've had been attending those meetings all over the years until 2022 when we were not invited anymore. Um, we had wanted a public, public consultation. It was formally proposed for 2020, but never took place. And when... Um, we wanted to pursue this. Uh, we did our own consultation with 118 residents and users. And uh, we therefore did a survey of the ground nesting birds. We uh, had a meeting with Councillor Day and put this forward, um, our report, and we did a presentation. And we were promised there'd be a response to this report. Nothing's materialised. He also um, promised that there'd be a consultation before any <clears throat> future fencing went up, but of course this hasn't taken place. Um, we don't understand why there hasn't been a working party meeting for the last year since councillors were appointed to this group <coughs> and uh, the public consultation still wanted. Um, the issues, the focus really is on the birds, the ground nesting birds, and we worry because we found that they were abandoning their nests halfway through the breeding season um, because the grass was too high. This is something the RSPB um, state. They won't nest when the grass gets too high. We noticed they abandoned these nests and it's critical because the birds are short-lived and they must have another brood at the latter part of the season to maintain their numbers. This we don't think has been happening and we think the fencing is detrimental to this. We, we believe that the grass is growing higher there. Possibly all sorts of reasons why. Maybe rabbits are grazing outside rather than inside. But that all needs to be talked about. We think the ecologist reports over the years have been, have been deficient. We pointed out inadequacies. 
And we'd much rather, say, someone like the Warwickshire Wildlife Trust are commissioned to carry out a proper survey if this fencing goes ahead, which, of course, we don't think it should because there hadn't been in consultation. It wasn't either um, talked about in the scrutiny committee. Um, oh, I should say uh, the ecologist didn't make any uh, visits after June, which was problematic. Obviously, because that's when the breeding um, carries on till July and August. Um, oh, dogs are supposed to be the main problem. We have seen little evidence of that. We've got a lot of dog walkers on our membership, and most of them are responsible. It possibly does happen, um, but we, we haven't seen it ourselves. No one has noticed this. It's just hearsay, and the dog warden hasn't picked up anything either. Four minutes. Um, we think we need a combined um, partnership on this. There needs to be a common strategy um, to protect the needs of the wildlife on the area and the needs of the community because it is so well used. It came into its own during COVID. So what we need really is a, an urgent meeting of the working party, possibly delay these measures until it's all properly aired and discussed. Um, because the overriding factor is we haven't had proper consultation and that's what we need, proper public consultation. Consultation, consultation, consultation. Wildlife Act. Oh, the Wildlife Act, sorry, I forgot. The Wildlife Act doesn't um, ensure, ask, require that these extreme measures are taken because they're only scheduled for birds. We do need to look after them, yes, but not with fencing and not to the detriment of their breeding. Thank you. Right, time. Great timing, thank you very much. Um, I th well, I'll first of all ask briefly if the Chief Exec who's been involved in this would like to respond. He may not wish to, and then we'll go in the normal order. Uh, yes, there is obviously a considerable background to all of this, but just some basic facts. Although the people do, of Warwick do regard St Mary's lands as a common, it is not in fact and in law, common land. So um, it, the responsibility for managing falls to the district council. Uh, it is a, an interesting and challenging open space because there is a diversity of interest in it, both from people who pursue more sporting, formal sporting activity to people who do it, use it informally for walking or running, um, uh, for, for golf. Uh, and of course, what we have done since we brought in a management plan for the area is to improve the biodiversity of the central south area if I can call it if you're familiar with the area basically there is a footpath which runs east west and basically you've got the golf course to the north of that and largely this uh, area to the south of it so that's the background the starting off point of it was not originally to actually look at the birds it was to assess a request that we'd actually had a few years ago to change the rules about the model plane flying and uh, one of the issues raised was would there be an impact for good or for ill upon the ground nesting birds that people did know happened in that area so at that point we did appoint an ecologist to come and investigate and what they found was is there was probably minimal impact from the aeroplanes because they change from being noisy petrol driven ones to much quieter electric ones. Um, but what they did find was evidence that actually there was more disturbance from people, and I'm afraid from dogs going through the uh, more rough cut areas. So following that, we did, and this was taken through the working party at the time. Um, we did decide to examine that area much, much further conducted research and clearly there was evidence that we needed to do something and that simply doing what we'd done before about having signs up had not worked before um, and it seemed therefore pointless just repeating that particular exercise um, nor even the idea of just roping it off because basically people were not uh, respecting um, the need to kind of, if you, if you like. So Mary's Lands is a big area. It's not as if it's excluding people from an open space. So you have that. So we started that for one year, uh, and that was reported back. Um, and I think the view was is that one year wasn't enough to actually tell whether or not the measures were um, really effective or 
not, because there's not enough of information there to determine a trend. Um, so we did agree that to conduct it for a further uh, two years, which we've, which we've done. Um, we have the ecologist report uh, before you. Um, we did consider the, the um, information that from St Mary's Lands, and indeed the last, mem last meeting of the working party had the lady who actually did that study came along and spoke to the other working party members. Um, so we have the, the uh, report from the ecologist. Uh, the ecologist, I think, sets out three recommendations, uh, sorry, three options. Um, I think from the officer's perspective on this, um, going to permanent fencing is quite a big step, I have to say, um, recognising there would be an awful lot of issues and certainly wouldn't be prepared to recommend that without doing public, full and very extensive public consultation. So I think that, in a sense, what's been recommended is a, not necessarily a compromise, but it is a measure that we have got some evidence to suggest that it is effective overall in terms of protecting ground nesting birds, albeit with some modifications to the area proposed to be protected. That's a reflection of the, of the experience. Um, but that, what we should then do in this period then is to go through that, and then we would have quite a few years, potentially up to five years, uh, data to actually be able to use so that any public consultation is not simply determined by opinion, but actually we've got quite a body of evidence and we can take on board the, the precise kind of brief for, for that to make sure we're being effect, it's been effective in that study. I wouldn't recommend that you defer it because the breeding season starts from February. We're on the cusp, so basically we, if you're going to do it and protect it, you need to do it or not do it at all because that's the situation. Because if you're going to do effective consultation, we all know that to do that properly will take months. So you would be abandoning effectively protective measures this year. That's the practical reality of, 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 that, of that. So recommendation from officers would be to pursue this course of action. Happy that um, uh, uh, we restart the working party uh, meetings. For clarity's sake, basically, uh, priorities of, of staff time on other matters has taken priority over setting up the working party. Um, clearly recognise we need to do that, in, uh, though, to pursue uh, this particular course of action, if that's what Cabinet agree. Okay, thank you very much. Now turn to group leaders. So, Councillor Bode for the Liberal Democrats, any views from you? Yes, I think I'm one of the few councillors here who knows the story of uh, St Mary's Lands <clears throat> extensively. I have to say that this, the decision was taken by a committee to actually do the fencing and protection on the, the nesting sites. And I think it seemed very clear from the report that that needs to be moved slightly for certain reasons. Now, there might be some mileage, and I don't know, but let's talk to somebody about is the grass too, does the grass get too long? Now, I have to say, for my very young days, when we used to play football on a football field, the grass got cut every now and again, and we had uh, skylarks going up and down all around us. So I think you can do some management during the season, but I think we need to take some advice on that. And looking at the report, it did appear to make a difference. And what we need to do with our biodiversity aims and everything else is to make it better. And I, and I, I totally agree with the chief exec. You go for consultation, stop and go for consultation now. There's a year gone. So you've probably lost the three years that you already had. So I think we just need to get on with it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hales for the Conservative group. Any thoughts? Um, thank you, Leader. Um, I too have played football on there as Councillor Bode. Maybe not at the same time, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, I, I concur in terms of what's been said by Councillor Bode and obviously with the Chief Executive as well. Um, I, I would proceed with it as well. Thank you. Councillor Falk for the Went National Independence. Well, like Councillor Bode, I probably know history about this and um, been involved with it uh, for quite a while. Uh, I wouldn't be happy with permanent fences, I don't think they're appropriate. Uh, on St Mary's lands. Um, I don't know enough about skylarks to know about the um, the grass, but I've been assured that they prefer shorter grass. So yes, we certainly need to look at that. Um, I can't say why the group has not met, but the council, uh, Chris Elliott has said why it hasn't met in the last 12 months. Um, 
I'm inclined to agree for another two years. I'm glad they're only doing another two. And I, I, that gives us two years to look at it, to consult again with the, um, uh, the working parties at Mary's Land and uh, come up with a, a definite, this we are going to do all the time. So um, that gives us time. We can't delay the birds who have been nesting. Well, I'm already starting to think about nesting. So, uh, but I would like to, to see that we will be meeting with the working party um, and coming up with, we don't want this again in two years' time. We want a definite, we've done the trial, we're going to do this or not. Okay, thank you. Before we turn to Councillor Roberts, any other Cabinet members wish to speak? Uh, no? Okay, thank you. Councillor Roberts, there are a few things there. There's obviously the recommendations, there's the view of the working party and something about the lengths of grass which you may wish to comment on or not. Thank you, Chair. Um, and first of all, thank you to our speaker for coming in and talking to us today and thank you for everyone's comments. Um, I will certainly take on board of what's been said in the notes about the grass. Um, this paper is, is seeking to continue the trial which has been going on for two years, um, to protect ground nesting birds in St Mary's Land. The main nesting bird here is the skylark. It is an endangered species, which means over 50% of its population has reduced in the last um, 25 years. And in the last two years, where the fencing has existed, we've seen a steady increase in skylark numbers, which means it shows that it is having an effect. But I take on board what the ecologist is, is, you know, suggesting that we need to continue this further. Extending this trial doesn't mean we're, um, we're fencing off all of St Mary's. So there is room to work with everybody and make sure it's a place for, you know, not just birds, dog walkers, but anyone who, who might want to be there. But I think the most important thing we've got to take on board here is um, the responsibility we have to protect wildlife and biodiversity. So taking that into account, I commend the recommendations set out in this report to, to Cabinet. Okay, thank you. That's a proposal. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor King. All those in favour? Uh, thank you very much for that. And thank you to our public speaker. Uh, we're now going back to the um, agenda. So... Uh, next item is election of chair and vice chair, and this is of the council. I'm proposing that we have Councillor Margrave as the chair next year and uh, Councillor Tangri as a deputy. So that's my suggestion. I'm going to go in slightly different order and ask Councillor Falp if she has a view on that. Well, it would have been nice to confer with Rob a little earlier than about two days ago. You know, he's a busy man and, and he needs to get things sorted. Um, as group leader, it would have been nice to have a talk, as we normally do. Um, I'm pleased to see you're hopefully keeping it proportionate. We normally go Liberal, Labour, Conservative, um, with our residents, and in there was only ever you. So, yeah, I don't think you wanted to do it, or you never asked. So, um, I welcome Councillor Margrave uh, as the independent becoming um, uh, chairman. Um, I've got no problem with Councillor Tangri. Um, I'm sure he'll do well. It would have just been nice to have had a discussion before uh, finding out tonight that, uh, who's going to be the deputy. I thought I had raised it at LCG, but apologies if I didn't. Uh, Councillor Hales, any comment from you? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, obviously I, I obviously wasn't at the LCG, so it's the first I've heard of it. Um, I'm more than happy in terms of the obviously appointment of Rob. I'm sure it'll be a fantastic chair, um, and also with Councillor Tangri as well. Um, so I, I wasn't aware of that either, but probably I wouldn't be in that meeting, to be fair. Well, thank you for that, and apologies if I uh, was tardy in that respect. Uh, Councillor Bode. Absolutely. News to me tonight that Councillor Tangri is going to be the vice chair. You didn't tell anyone. Um, normally, group leaders would know at least a week or so before, and the name would be floated to say, what do you think? And usually it's the name that comes forward. Why that didn't happen this year, I have no idea. But quite happy for those to go forward and hope we don't do the same next year. Thank you. My apologies, that's noted. <laughs> Any comments from uh, Cabinet colleagues? Okay, so I'm a pro a pro making that proposal. Uh, does anyone happy, is anyone happy to second? Thank you, Councillor Billy Ald. All those in favour? 
Uh, thank you very much. We now move on to item five, which is the, the budget, general fund revenue and capital budget, which um, was discussed at um, the budget review group. So, uh, Councillor Hales, would you like to feedback from that? Yeah, more than happy to. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, so, um, the group thanked officers for all the hard work in terms of putting it together. Um, and we went through in detail regarding the MTFS um, and the impact on reserves. Um, obviously, there's details to come forward in terms of the change management structure, which, strategy, which I know has got to come forward um, to Council, I think, in the Cabinet in March, I think it is. Um, and obviously, the assumptions that they're in within it. Um, there was a request by Councillor Collins in terms of the uh, communication um, around the grants um, and what could be done for that, which I know I think was, was picked up as well in terms of doing that. Um, I suppose the only item um, which I will write to group leaders is just in terms of the attendance on the committee. Um, so there was only five councillors out of ten um, that were there. So that was disappointing, I think, um, in terms of the amount of work that had gone in from officers and obviously the fact those five had to carry the other five councillors who weren't there, who may have had valid reasons to be fair to them. But that was one that's going to be fed back through the group leaders, which I, I will do um, from there. And in regards to the HRA, um, again, um, I think there was acknowledgement um, from across the... Um, so if we leave the HRA until next, no at all. thank you very much. Um, in terms of group leaders uh, feeding back, Councillor Bode. Thank you. So damn big, I've lost my place. No more, I did make a couple of notes. <clears throat> the, uh, the hydrogen help, where we've got 75k in, still there, I, I thought we'd perhaps ditch that. <clears throat> but that still seemed to be listed as being a potential spend, uh, which I think we could probably recover that uh, and not bother. And uh, the bit I, I did like, I'm only picking on, on bits, but the play area disabled improvements, which I've been going on about for years, and um, we've never actually got anywhere. There's 100k in there, and let's go on and do it. So apart from that, you'll hear from us at budget time. Thank you. Looking forward to that. Back to you, Councillor Hales, in terms of the Conservative group. No, I, I mean, I, I suppose from my view, and obviously it was it was my budget that was put forward in terms of doing that. So I, I think in terms of the dis disabled play equipment, um, I think it's vital that we move forward. And that I'm sure officers and speaking to them are keen to bring that forward. But I think that that's vital in terms of um, ensuring the needs are met throughout our community. Um, but no, apart from that... Um, I think the, the figures and the facts were in there through Councillor Chilvers and the work that was done through um, Mr Rowlands um, was sound succinct. Thank you very much. And Councillor Falp? Firstly, apology. I couldn't make that tonight, um, but I made sure Councillor Barton was here um, because I had had my chance to have a say at a group me leaders' meeting. So uh, I apologise. We double booked and it was we decided that um, Councillor Barton would come and I wouldn't. So, um, yeah, I'm... I'm yeah, relatively happy um, with it. My only beef, and you know this, is I'm not happy about change programme, which I know absolutely mm. nothing about, and we are not going to be told about until I think it's the 19th, is it 19th of February. Uh, it's difficult to say, yes, it's fine. We have absolutely no idea what change programme is, what it involves, what it will cover. Um, and, you know, I don't like, I'm not very good at assumptions. Uh, I like facts and figures, but um, apart from that beef, then, yeah, if there's any more to say, we said it full council. And thank you, Andrew Arlins, for all your work. And I'm sorry I wasn't here when you got the information about garages for me, and, uh, and I wasn't here to hear it. We, you can always drop me an email. Thank you very much. Before we go to Councillor Childers, any comments from the other Cabinet colleagues? Uh, yes, Councillor Harrison. No, I just want to state about the change management programme. The original intention was to bring it at the same time as budget, but it's just been misalignment. But yes, um, and I apologise, the briefing is on the 19th. It's just working out diaries. I would also say with change management, two of the key officers involved have been rather involved in moving out of Riverside House and the... Um, the Asset Compliance Programme, which both of which are fairly major change management things, and they they had to come first because there was urgency about those. I'd also draw your attention to a Recommendation 9, which is a budget-setting timetable be shared in April. This is saying we are wishing for all councillors to have 
much earlier sight of at least a draft budget. So that means this year for the, the year after, even though we won't know the settlement from central government, because I think that will, I think we, we all think that will move things along uh, quite considerably. Any other, co uh, Councillor Roberts? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to quickly comment on the disabled equipment and the behind pay budget. I just want to just make everyone aware that offices are working very hard in the moment and we hope to have some delivery of new equipment and uh, special signs this year. Okay, thank you. I think it's to Councillor Chilvers now. I would say I did have a very brief chat, you remember yesterday, about another reserve, so um, which was a Commonwealth Games reserve. Um, so you might want to comment on that and the hydrogen hub as well in your summing up. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. You did have me worried there for a minute. I thought you weren't going to name which reserve. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so just first of all to say thank you for the comments and thank you for the, the budget working group last night. Um, I thought it was um, really helpful to go through that scrutiny on those some of those underlying budget assumptions. And as I've said before, very happy to continue to, to talk about those. Um, just to pick up in terms of Councillor Collins' request about sort of bringing together some of the grants information. Um, corresponded with him today on that. I think we're just trying to figure out the best way of getting bringing that together, um, um, which isn't going to take too much time for officers, but actually gives us as members and the public what we need. Um, so Hydrogen Hub and the um, Commonwealth Games Reserve, yeah, agree. We just need to, to sort those sort those out and move them into appropriate places. So thank you very much for, for picking those ones up. Um, Councillor Falp again on the change programme. Yeah, you're absolutely right to uh, scrutinise it um, very, very strongly um, because it's such a big thing. And, and just on the budget side of it, I would just emphasise that we've, we've very deliberately, because we know that change management programmes take time to deliver, that we've put a, a cautious figure in the 24-25 budget uh, in terms of delivery. Um, so hopefully um, we've been very careful not to um, uh, be over-optimistic um, because we know that change programmes uh, are difficult to do well and we're determined uh, to do it well. Um, so just moving on to the budget as a whole, um, I'll save, I won't say too much, but just, you know, in terms of this budget is designed to help us deliver as a council on our three corporate uh, strategic priorities. So number one, delivering valued and sustainable services. Obviously, these are really difficult economic times for councils. And we've, we've really worked hard. And again, thank you to the officers for all their work in kind of that long, providing that long term financial plan so that we can continue delivering excellent services for our residents when they most need them. And so that's been a lot of our, um, our focus. Um, no one likes having to put up council tax, um, but um, given the current financial situation, um, officers are now, hopefully as cabinet, we're recommending putting up council tax by 2.99%. Um, for a band D dwelling, uh, that is £5.30 per year. So not a week, not a month, £5.35 £5 a year, that's 11p a week for a band D dwelling. And that extra money is so important because it, it is that recurrent spend. So we can, you know, we can use it to plan for the future. So number two on low cost, low carbon energy across the district. Um, I know this one should be in the HRA um, in a minute, but the five million ring fenced in the HRA that we've, we've ring fenced to allow us to pilot retrofitting of our housing stock. We know that that's like a little down payment for the scale of work, but we want to get started. And also, I'm really pleased to, to point out the 500,000 in our new Energy Generations Project Fund. Um, and that's for things like solar panels um, on our assets and possibly community assets as well, um, which we know that can provide an income stream. So it's providing low carbon energy and also um, an income stream. So it's very much an investment. And then finally, uh, number three, creating vibrant, safe and healthy communities of the future. Um, we've got additional money in for cost of living support, 
Councillor Roberts, I think, is going to talk about the paddling pool in a future item. Um, and also um, something that's, um, uh, that's come through a lot is um, additional resource for handling fly tipping, um, which um, has been sort of a, a big issue in, in parts of the district uh, for the next year. So it's just a little flavour of some of my favourite things. Um, and of course, what we're doing this evening is us as cabinet recommending this budget to full council in two weeks. And so I look forward for sort of ongoing uh, discussions with all members and, uh, and group leaders uh, over the next couple of weeks. So my door uh, is very much open for the conversations around the budget over the next couple of weeks. So I'd like to uh, recommend the recommendations as laid out um, to, to you as cabinet. So that's recommendations one to nine. Does that have a second there? Thank you, Councillor Harrison. All those in favour? Thank you very much. And I agree. Thank you hugely for officers there. That's been an enormous task and will continue to be an enormous task going forwards as well. So item six, housing revenue account budget. Uh, this is slightly different from the previous item in that the business plan comes next month. Uh, but Councillor Hales, I believe the budget group um, discussed this as well. Um, we did, thank you, Leader. Um, so in terms of um, feedback um, from the HRA, um, the group acknowledged, um, I think through Mr Rollins, that there been to be a greater awareness of full details of the HRA compared to the questions we had for item five, compared to quite item six, were uh, quite discernible in terms of the difference there. So uh, we noticed the report and um, a wave few questions that came forward referenced the social rents in comparison to others across Warwickshire. So that was a request for comparisons, yes. Uh, in the report, there's percentages for, for, from the market conditions here, but not uh, from elsewhere in the, the area of the region. <laughs> Uh, Councillor Bode, any thoughts from your group? Uh, yes, uh, marginally. So the panels came up on the previous report, General Fund, but it's down as a, a HIP expenditure, capital expenditure, so it should all be housing, property, doesn't split. If it's in, if it's in housing investment plan, it's housing, uh, which is half a million in there every year. 500,000. And uh, I just wondered if we knew, it was more, more of a general question, of certain houses have had solar panels on for donkey shares. Do we know exactly, if we analyse how many we need to do, taking those into account? And the other thing that we need to look at is, have we got a revenue cost on there for actually maintaining the systems? Because some of the older systems haven't been looked at for yonks. So that was a question on that one. On garages, there was, there was talk in here about spending money on garages, or we need, if we're going to put the rent up, we need to look after them. So the question I was asking on that, not for an answer now, but probably an answer a bit later on, is how many garages have we actually got which are occupied? And how many have we got spare? Because it could well be that we're putting more money into it than to do repairs and we're getting back, and you're better off using the land for building houses on in my view. And then there was a comment in there about rent clawback, that the, the government's been fixing how, what the rent increase can be year on year, and you basically stick with it. You can go below, but they're really recommending what it should be and basing all their expenditure on those figures. And there's a comment in there about when that finishes, which is due to finish them stating what the rent should be at the end of this year, that the sum in the housing family, if you like, looking at rent clawback. Now that I take, to, there's no more detail than that, I take that to mean that where the rents have been held down by the government imposing whatever their limit happened to be, that someone's going to go backwards and say, well, we're owed all this because we couldn't claim it then. The concern I have with that is, if that happened, somebody's got to pay it, and I wouldn't like to see it coming out of housing revenue across the country, let alone here, uh, because it's taking money out of housing, uh, which is about the last thing we want. But apart from that, interesting to see what's coming through. And um, just see one or two niggly bits. 
Thank, thank you for those niggly bits, Councillor Bode. Uh, Councillor Hales, this time for your group, any thoughts? Um, no niggly bits from me, um, so no happy with that, thank you very much. Thank you, and Councillor Phelp, how about the Whitmash Independence? Why do you niggly bits? I like niggly bits. Uh, I agree with Councillor Bode about solar panels, they're lovely, but they do need to be maintained. And um, the pigeons have decided they're really, really good for roosting under. Um, so a lot of them by me, my, where I live, um, they're having problems with the guttering now because, you know, the uh, pigeons do things which, uh, you know, goes into the guttering and we've got fields now. It's good for biodiversity, I suppose, because we've got now got fields on the, in, where the guttering is. But you, if you put anything in, it needs to be maintained. And, you know, it's a, there's a cost. We've got to get somebody out with ladders to maintain them. So we do have to think about that. Um, yeah, what, yeah, garages. My beef about garages. Um, I do think that... Um, I don't mind putting rents up for garages, but we've got to maintain them. And I think the thing I said to, Councilor, uh, to Andrew Rawlings was, why aren't we building houses on them? Which has always been our wish to, you know... Uh, I'd much rather have houses than garage sites. And if you're not having the garages, and you're not building the houses, well, flatten the garages and have them um, just park it. They don't have to be uh, garages. Like Council Mode, I'm, I'm convinced there's very few garages actually used to garage cars. Most cars are too big now to get into uh, the garages that we've got. So um, people use them for storage. So, uh, you know, either knock them down and build houses on them, bearing in mind that there are, most of them are... Um, uh, asbestos, so it's going to cost a bit to knock them down. Uh, knock them down and have just parking, uh, but keep them well maintained if you're going to keep putting rents up on them and make sure they're used for cars. Niggly bit over. Thank you very much. Before I turn to Councillor Whiteman to sum up, uh, any other? Uh, Councillor Chilvers. Yeah, thank you. I'll just pick up a, a couple of points and obviously um, as Councillor Hales said from looking at the, the HRA things last night um, you know it, it does deserve more um, more time and attention through the year you know as I was saying last night it's uh, you know we collect 30 million pounds of rent a year um, as a you know from our housing stock um, so uh, yeah um, just on the solar so the solar panels in the hip is a complete, which obviously has to be spent on HRA property, is completely separate for the, from the energy generation fund in the general fund. So they're two separate funds. Um, pigeon, um, pigeons and maintenance of solar panels. Yes, my, my solar panels definitely have pigeon protectors. And I think the broader point around solar panels, which um, Councillor might, might, might say more on, is, is that you know, we need to make sure we factor in that maintenance in when we're working out you know, our income streams. Uh, on them um, and I think those are the ones kind of in my side of the, <laughs> on the finance side I'll um, leave the others to Councillor Whiteman. Thank you very much any other comments uh, no uh, so Councillor Whiteman uh, clearly the focus should be on the recommendations so <laughs> if you can say a little bit about those uh, there has been a bit, a bit about garages as well as the cost increase and solar panels but that might be a thing for the programme board for strategic priority two to pick up. I think some of the weeds and the, um, you know, the niggly bits um, are very valid points, but I think perhaps they are, they are issues that we need to go in in a little bit more detail as part of the project board. Um, I think the solar panels and the effectiveness of them is something we will be wanting to pick up as part of our overall strategy. I think, you know, a lot of these things, it's quite difficult to really look at them in isolation. I think we really do need to look at them as part of our overall strategy for um, energy efficiency and, um, you know, also you know, balancing the budget and making sure that we've got a, a sustainable strategy across the board. I mean, looking at the recommendations in the whole, I mean, clearly I think the most important aspect of this is that we are... Um, following the government guidance, I suppose we are putting up the uh, the rents this year um, in accordance with the um, the cap that we are we are able to apply. Um, I think why are we doing this? Because any rise of this sort, you know, has repercussions, and we understand, you know, we understand 
that. But um, we, of course, could have reduced the rents at a lower rate. You know, that, that was open to us on dwellings. Um, but I think we do have to recognise where we are at the moment on that. Um, there was the four-year fixed minus 1% rental income, and then the 7% rent cap last year didn't match inflation. Um, this recommendation really is based upon us um, maintaining the current level of serv service and is really um, an important requirement if we are going to um, achieve the priorities um, that, that, that we are setting ourselves. Um, the garage, it, it's an interesting point. Again, I, I think it, it's, it's something... I hear what you're saying. I think you know clearly the priority is um, addressing housing need in the area, not addressing the need to uh, to park people's cars. And I hear what you say in terms of um, a lot of garages now not being used for their original purpose. Um, having said that, again, I think it's not easy to look at these things in isolation. Um, um, I think, as uh, Judy said, the um, garages are packed full of asbestos they are not particularly easy sites to develop so i think when you're looking at this in in a uh, situation where there's a housing emergency it needs to be in the context of a wider housing strategy we need to be getting the most sort of bang for our buck um, and we need to sort of be looking at that but it's something we will take away um, and i'm sure the program board will be looking at all development opportunities including whether there are better options for the garage sites but um, I don't have the niggly sort of bid answers and I wouldn't be able to give you occupancy rates. I'm not sure how easy that would be to produce, really, because I think once they're let out, it's probably not possible to go in and check if somebody's putting their car in there, for example. But um, I think it's something, you know, we would get as much data as we could when we're, we're putting together a strategy. But I think in terms of the, the main recommendations, I think the paper sets out in some length why, really, we are where we are. Um, the clawback and everything else, I think, is really just a, a, a comment about the wider um, housing sector and what housing associations may do in the, in the um, you know, to give some context to what we're currently doing at the moment. I think if we were to decide to do any clawback, that's a different conversation, and uh, I don't think that's really the recommendation in this paper. So um, I'm quite happy, really, to recommend acceptance of the uh, of the paper to colleagues. Of those nine recommendations, do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Harrison. All those in favour? Thank you very much. And we're now on to air quality management area, <coughs> revocations as such. Uh, Councillor Bode, any thoughts from you? No. And Councillor Hales? No. And Councillor Falp? Oh, there was something to say, you know that. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Marion Wolf who kindly gave the shadow um, portfolio shadow spokespersons, perhaps the Karen Gifford and I, a briefing on this, uh, along with Jack. Um, we can't say no, and they did push back. They didn't want to do it now, but they've been told they've got to. Um, our concern was what, and I think some of the other concerns were, does that mean we're not going to monitor at all? Well, yes, we are. We're still going to monitor, but, um, you know, in a, in a different way. In fact, we can probably do more monitoring. Um, so it is what it is. We've got to do it. Um, but the department is certainly looking at keeping an eye on it. And should it go up again, um, then they can ask to have them put back in. Fortunately, the trends are all downwards. And if there are more electric vehicles, it may speed up. Any comments from Cabinet? Oh, Councillor Chilvers. Yeah, just to say, I, as the report sets out, I don't really think we have a choice here. I just um, do want to emphasise that, um, that I, I don't think, you know, the safe, the safe limits of, um, of, you know, that, that 40, 40 microgram figure, um, it's claimed to be beneath that, but that will spike at various times when there are traffic jams. So I, I, I'm unhappy that we're removing it, but I accept we don't have any choice. And so just wanted to vocalise that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Councillor King? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, we all seem to agree, well, most of us probably agree that it's, it's an unhappy situation, but the fight to um, increase air quality and to, and to fight particulates and air pollution, wherever it comes from, continues, and we will continue doing that with all our efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kennedy? I think Councillor King has said exactly what I was going to say. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, no more repeats. Uh, Councillor Sinnott. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, it's a straight, simple, straightforward. DEFRA wants us to uh, the revocation of these three areas. It could be a good news story that things are moving in the right direction, but as Councillor Palp said, we're not dropping the ball. We're still monitoring. We will look for air quality. I mean, the, the, the district's changing, so it gives us a chance to get on the front foot and to explore, find out where uh, it may be falling below standards. So uh, I, I think it's quite a positive thing. I'm quite happy for it, and I'm happy to recommend the recommendation, Chair. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor King, thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, we're now on to part two items, which means the Council's dis uh, view is not required on these. <coughs> Complaints policy. Uh, Mr Leach, were you going to mention something? Thank you, Leader. Yes, uh, just so Cabinet is aware and other members, today the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman has published its Code of Complaints Policy, its Complaint Handling Code, uh, for local authorities to bring into force, which obviously is covered by the recommendations in your report to that potential delegation to make any changes necessary. The proposal is they're not going to start using the code until 2627, so we've got a little while to implement any changes. Um, and they'll be providing guidance to all authorities by the end of April 2025. So we do have some time. Um, they've also split their code from the Housing Ombudsman. So the Housing Ombudsman will be updating their code as well to allow to run two parallel codes rather than have one single code. Um, yeah, there we are. <laughs> Does that mean we have to be really pedantic and on recommendation to change it to codes rather than a single code? Um, you probably do, actually, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Bode, any thoughts from your group? O only on what you just said, that they're not going to come in the new ones until two, years, two or three years down the road. Do we need to change this at all now? Okay, thank you. We'll go round first and then see if uh, Mr Leach wishes to comment. Uh, Councillor Hales? No, no, nothing. That was a very fair question from Councillor Bode. So. Okay, thank you. Councillor Falp? My concern is, is co complaints you usually learn from. Some of, uh, you know, um, people really just want to uh, have a go and have a whinge. Uh, but most complaints, there's always something you can learn from it. I'm... Quite often people will ask me, you know, I, I want to complain, but I don't know how to do it. And I'm not sure how, we, we don't want to, everybody to know how to complain all the time. But, um, and I always say to go to the website, it, everything's on the website, but it, it is quite complicated. And the stage one and the stage two and the three, and why why are the people who actually I'm complaining about get a chance to, to look at it first? And, and I, I just don't know how we can make it any easier for people who... Generally, I've got a complaint, um, don't understand what they have to do with that complaint. And um, perhaps because we'll have a person actually looking after it, it might be easier just to say, well, I think they're the higher level uh, complaints I'll be involved with. So um, we do need to learn from complaints and uh, people are being put off actually complaining because they they don't know where to look, they don't know... We're a little bit scared sometimes, you know, if I complain, what happens? So it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because, um, you know, um, how do we make it easier on something that is actually, as we've just said, really, very, really, really complicated? No answer, really. Okay, thank you. So, yes, if you can, you may very briefly mention a new post as well to try and speed things up. Yeah, um, so I'll work back because I do... Um, do you, Joe? I'll do um, Councillor Phelps response first. Um, it's quite clear and all officers have had training on this and we've done some information bits out to all officers that any officer can take a complaint. So if anybody phoned up, any officer can take that complaint. There's a process they can all access the forms to fill them in so they get passed on. There should be really no barriers for an individual wanting to make a complaint in that way. Um, in response to Councillor Bode, I suppose my reflection would be our current policy has been in since 2009 and there are other changes within there as well in terms of 
shall we say, handling more challenging individuals who present themselves to the council. Um, and from that as well, we also want to have time. As Lee's just referred to, we've got the new post coming as well, which um, I've spent the afternoon shortlisting for um, and still haven't finished. It's been very successful recruitment so far. So I think from that perspective, that, that also provides that focus more on learning from complaints and driving uh, performance as well through the council, because it's about complaints, policy and performance, that role. So it has more of an overview, um, certainly bringing that information back for, for everybody to use to help deliver, uh, develop their services. Thank you very much. Um, any comments from Cabinet colleagues? Okay, to me, this is the real nuts and bolts of the Council's working, really important, really important to be better at it. Uh, and also to take time. Uh, senior officers over the years have spent a huge amount of time on these, these issues, uh, sadly, and that probably will always be the case. But as much as we can reduce it as possible, the better for the, the good functioning here. I do like this complaints policy in that it starts as helpful feedback. Anybody, however angry they are coming to us, we should view as someone who has a concern they're brave enough to raise to us and that we should see what we can learn from that. And there may well be things that we can learn, even if we don't like the tone to begin with. So that real positive bit to begin with. Clearly, there may be times when it's kind of going round in circles a bit and we need to find a way of drawing it, drawing it to a halt, uh, I think, better. So I'm pleased and I'm happy to um, rec propose this from the chair, the two recommendations. Do I have a seconder? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whiteman. All those in favour? Thank you very much. The next one is on to refurbishment and improvement to existing paddling pools. Uh, Councillor Bowe, did the Liberal Democrats have views? Well, there's a question I, I tried to find it in the report. I wasn't quite sure what it was. But as I go around the country looking at new, new developments and squares and whatever, you often see these jets of water going up, which aren't water cans, they're just jets coming up out the floor. And the kids seem to love them. And I don't know whether that is what is referred to in, is it a, a water pan or something? Because it didn't strike me as being what that seemed to suggest it was. And I just thought, had we looked at it, because I couldn't tell whether the comparison to be done or they're expensive or not were what I'm talking about. But certainly a place I particularly know is Dorchester where they have a, a new square where they've converted a brewery and whatever. And in the middle of that, there's like an amphitheatre where the parents sit around the outside and the kids just run through these jets going up and down. And I think there's one in Coventry. Yeah, there is. And they seem to love them. Now, is that cheaper to run? and safer from our point of view, risk-wise, than a paddling pool where people can slide, slip over and drown in an inch of water. I don't know. Thank you. Councillor Hales, the Conservative Group views. Um, no, I, I thought it was um, I thought it was a good report. Um, I, I mean, in terms of Councillor Bode's comments, um, they are really impressive, and the one country is, is very good. Um, not so great. Not so great if I haven't taken spare... Um, change of clothes for your children, uh, but that's a parenting issue more than anything else. Um, but overall, I thought it was a good report. Um, happy to support it. Thank you very much. And Councillor Felt for the Whitnash Independence. Yeah, there's a fantastic one on the South Bank in London. Um, I was down there in London um, and the children were loving it. I was chuckling to myself because I've got a photo of a member of staff paddling in that pool when uh, I think he was about two, if he might have been a bit younger. Um, so it has been in it has been in use a long time and, and it's very popular. Yes. Nothing like embarrassing your children, is it? Um but um there's a, probably a few um, um members of staff who've been paddling in that pool for a long time. Um but it'd be a shame to have nothing there, that's what I'm saying, you know, I can understand how much it costs to do it. Um but it is very popular both in Warwick and in um um, in, in Victoria Park and it would be a shame to use it I can understand people are saying about getting that she in and out of that pool in, in um, which you can walk into the one in Warwick which you can't do in the one in Leamington um, so I hope we have something even if it's not a pool so that um, you know, children and grandchildren who have now been in that, that pool um, uh, water is an important part of learning 
Okay, thank you. Um, comments, views from Cabinet? Okay, so it's to Councillor Robert. As if you can mention the bit about the, the, the different approaches to the two pools, that would be good. There's been a question about jets of water instead of paddling pools and access. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, will, I will take that away, the point about the jets um, into the fountains. We'll have a look at that, definitely. Um, yeah, these are, these are two fantastic features we have in our destination parks. Um, hugely popular um, every summer. It's just a sad fact that they've come to the end of their working life um, and we can no longer continue to patch them up as we've been doing for so many years um, for several reasons. A, it's very costly to do so, but B, there's no guarantee by doing a bit of patching it's not going to break down next week. As we saw last summer, they were closed several times um, over the summer period, causing you know people coming along and wanting to, to enjoy it. Um, so I think it's really important that we keep this provision in our parks. Um, and not just replace like for like, but take the opportunity to actually upgrade them um, if we're, if we're going to do this work. Um, there are two, we're looking at closing Victoria Park because it's in a worse condition than St Nick's, and that way uh, we can get it ready to start work happening in um, all of autumn this year. Um, and that also means we can keep the St Nick's running for a bit longer, which is part of the recommendation um, to, to help that. So we have one paddling pool open over the summer. Um, and yeah, so I, um, I commend the recommendations as set out in this report. Thank you very much. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor King. All those in favour? Thank you very much. We're now on to Packnor's Community <laughs> Centre. An update there. Councillor Bode, any of you? They've been waiting for a decent centre there for donkey's here, so the sooner we can get on with it, the better. I think you've said that about a few things. Um, thank you, though. Councillor Hales? Nothing from us. Agree. Uh, Councillor Falp? Fully support. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments from Cabinet members? So straight to Councillor <laughs> Sinnott. Does that mean you don't want me to go on a bit here? No, you're welcome to. <laughs> you can enthuse about it. Uh, absolutely. They... It's a great step forward. It's got to be uh, uh, done and delivered. Uh, the proposals there, the recommendations, sorry, uh, are for agreement in principle. I wholeheartedly sit behind this and I will ask for those recommendations. Okay, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Harrison. All those in favour? Thank you very much. And we're now on to the Better Points uh, scheme, uh, which is to encourage active travel. Uh, Councillor Bode, are your Nothing views? Right. No views. Councillor Hales, no. Councillor Falp? No, it's a good scheme. Um, I must get back on it again. I was on it at one time. I think I've still got the app. Um, yeah. Good, hope we can carry on. Okay, at least thank you. Um, that is the proposal. Uh, any comments, questions, views? Um, uh, Councillor Kennedy, yes. Yeah, I'd just like to, to look at the alternative options, um, paragraph 2.2, .2, with um, that this extension gives us an option to consider the future of this programme, whether we go on with something like this or whether we, in fact, do something different in order to encourage this um, behaviour change and modal shift and whether this is the best way to do it. But by extending for six months, we then should have um, sufficient data to enable us to make a, an informed decision as to what the best way forward is. Okay, so thank you. Um, I must admit in the discussions we've had, there have been mixed views. Some people think it's great and it's particularly good that it's been used by um, officers when they go to community groups and schools and so on to encourage them to get involved and uh, do more active travel. But the actual uptake in terms of the money spent, it's quite a lot per active user. So the idea of looking at alternatives is one that we put around before. So it's one that... We'd like to see the evidence so we can think, yes, there's a big uptake and we can carry on. If not, 
we may need to take the tough decision in six months' time to, to change it. So from the chair, I'm proposing that we agree with these recommendations. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kennedy, for seconding all those in favour. Uh, thank you very much. And um, we now do the public and press bit, although there are no public and press, but under section 100A of the Local Government Act 72, uh, public and press be excluded uh, by likely disclosure of exempt information within the paragraphs of Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 72, following the Local Government Access to Information Variation Order 2006.